First thing with this opener, what we did is cut off one of the legs of this chair. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that in the forge here after I sanded off the, uh, the paint and stuff that was on it. You don't want that to get in there and then potentially start to flame up with some chemicals and such. Let's get started with some PPE. So here what I'm doing is I took uh, my piece of steel over to the forge press and I'm gonna start drawing out the portion that will eventually become the D guard. So normally you would do this with a tang, but this is gonna be the D guard. So I'm, as you can see, I'm turning it, I'm adjusting it both directions, trying to get the length and the width that I want. Eventually I'll take it over to the anvil and uh, after a few passes in the forge press and I'll do some hand shaping there. So this is round two. I'm really just kind of squishing it here to get it wider. I have the length that I want, but I really didn't have the thickness I wanted so I just heated it up and brought it back over to the forge press. Here's another angle doing the exact same thing. As you can see, I have it on the flat die side and I'm just trying to get the width I want here to make a nice D guard so it'll sit how I want and have the correct shape I want. After this, I will take it over to the anvil and do any kind of finish work there. Here's the cleanup work I was talking about. So what I'm doing is just trying to get any type of an anomalies out of the edge so everything looks pretty symmetrical. I'm gonna be again trying to make it flat but then also make the sides kind of even as well. Eventually what I'll do is I'm gonna hammer in what I call the wizard hat which is basically like a little squirrel tail on one side that's gonna roll back and become part of the D guard. So after heating it up for a little while, I uh, brought it back out to then uh, basically hammer in that squirrel tail. And it's a little technique that I learned at the John C. Campbell Folk School. Uh, it makes a nice little decorative piece at the end and it's going to look really nice on the D guard. I'm flipping it around here to put the blade side in, or the, the future blade side. Now that the D-guard portion is done, I need to define where the handle and the blade will begin and end. So uh, we need to reheat. So after that heat, I'm going over to the forge press to make short work of drawing this blade length out. So I determined about two and a half, three inches what I need for that little handle space. This isn't a full size knife, it's a letter opener and then I'm gonna draw out the blade at, on the fullering and flat die, as you can see here, to get that as quick as I can to the correct width and length that I want for the blade. I'm 
Now to cut the excess off with my hardy cutter. Old blacksmith skill here. I could have used the saw to cut it off, but this is a way cooler method. Make sure you, if you do this, to quench your tongs and quench that piece of steel right away once it's removed. My uh, blacksmith instructor at the time, Matt Jenkins, told me that part is called wriggling it asunder. After another reheat, getting everything nice and straight again, now it's time to hammer that tip in. I don't like cutting a tip in with a, with a saw or grinder. I think you should hammer them in, add to the integrity of the, of the work that you're doing. Uh, and that's what I'm demonstrating here. Straightening up the edge a little bit and refining the tip a little bit more just to get that nice edge that I want. So I decided to put the blade in the vise here just to make sure it was perfectly straight as I could get it. Uh, in addition, I'm going to go ahead and twist the back of the handle here to line up the future D-guard with the position I need it to be in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to increase the length of the handle just a little bit and also round off the corners on the square portion where the handle is. So you'll see me rotating it and what I'm doing there is just hitting the corners to try to round that up just a bit. It's time to start shaping the D-guard. So the first thing you do is quench the squirrel tail so I can actually hit that part eventually if I need to and it won't change the shape of that. I'm using the side of the anvil here to kind of get that flat with the bottom of the handle before I start the curb. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up again for good measure. Here's the shaping process. Again, I had to requench the squirrel tail since I had reheated it. And I'm gonna now use the horn to kind of drive it around the way I want it to be using that angle. And then I'm gonna get it to the anvil and make sure everything is straight and then kind of hammer it into the final position where I would like the guard to sit.
better hit it two times on each side just for good luck. The mysterious quench. So there's canola oil is what we're putting it in there. Heated the blade up. It's going to get that nice color we want and also harden it as much as it possibly can be. So here's the final product, forged to shape. I have not put that on a grinder as you can tell at all. Eventually I will. But uh, that's the basic forging. And there she is. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.